Let us offer our consecration to the Lord. Lord, we offer up to you this day and we ask as we continue through this week for your blessing upon us. Let us always be docile to your grace. Let us always be filled with your love. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. I forgot to mention yesterday, it was the memorial of St. Ignatius of Loyola, the founder of the Jesuits. So obviously yesterday was a very powerful day within the Jesuit community. And I'm sure you might have seen if you were part of a Jesuit community, some kind of celebration. And today is the uh, memorial of St. Alphonsus Liguori, doctor of the church, who himself uh, was the founder of the Redemptorist. So we have two founders here. I always like to tell uh, the story that happened when I was in Los Angeles. I was just coming back to the church. And um, there's a there's an area in Los Angeles, I forget exactly where it is. I don't know if it's still, you know, the way it was. And this is back in the 80s, and it's an area of religious houses. There's a lot of religious houses in the area. And there was a, um, it was the like 800th anniversary of the birth of St. Francis or something like that. And the Franciscans had just bought a new house, which they use as a friary. And uh, so they had just recently moved into the house. And I always get a kick out of it because Franciscans are part of are, are that kind of spirituality, which you often hear um, in the Navy. We used to say um, you work hard and you play hard. Well, in the the Franciscans tend to be those who when they're called to be serious, they're serious, and when they're called to be joyful, they're joyful. And granted, everyone's called to be joyful all the time, but, you know, express their joyfulness. So anyway, they had this big party for the anniversary of the birth of St. Francis. And I always got a kick out of it because I always wanted to say, I, the neighbors probably next door are going, oh, isn't it nice? We have these quiet Franciscan friars moving in next door. And then, you know, a couple of days later, they have this huge party because it is the 800th anniversary of the birth of St. Francis. But I'm assuming they didn't party like that every night. But that particular night, they partied like it was 1881. There you go. Um, So it was obviously in 1981 that this happened. So in in any case, just thought I'd uh, talk about that. We're continuing with Jeremiah. And this is a principle that we see in Jeremiah. We see it in uh, Isaiah. We see it other places. The Lord takes Jeremiah to a potter. And of course, you've seen potters work and potters do their work. And but if something doesn't isn't working right the way it's being formed, then what the potter does is he just destroys it and builds it up again because it's clay. I mean, he can recreate what he was trying to do. And so the Lord is showing uh, the uh, Jeremiah this action of the potter and so saying that the Lord can do the same thing that he can always uh, bring down the house of Israel and rebuild it. He can always just change everything and rebuild it. So there's two things that it's important to know there, that when the Lord destroys a nation, he's doing it with the interest of rebuilding it. And secondly, uh, he will do it. Now, what will prevent him from doing it when the nation repents of their evil. Remember, when we're talking about evil, we're not talking about saying bad words. We're talking about uh, human sacrifice. We're talking about practicing idolatry. We're talking about lack of mercy, anger, hatred, all these things that are a projection of human emotions gone awry. That's what we're talking about. So this is what happens in the society. And remember what I said yesterday, how I entered the show, that uh, Alexis de Tocqueville recognized that the United States Constitution worked among people who were going to church. And this is also something that John Adams said. He said that the Constitution was made for religious people. He actually said that. So we understand those realities. I should mention, remember, I'm coming to you from Boston. Trust me, we know these quotes. So um, this is important. But what I said yesterday is we're not called to legislate uh, what is um, God's rule. We're called to live it. 
So do you understand the difference? See, if you legislate it, late it, it becomes an external pressure, but it's called, it's to become an internal pressure, an internal reality, an internal uh, uh, motivation for us. And the more people live that internal motivation, the more the 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 better the society becomes so you need to understand that but it also has to be true christianity true christianity does not hold up a sign saying i want jesus to be president and invades the congress sorry that's not true christianity there's nothing christian about that true christian christianity isn't ready to pick up uh, an ar-15 and shoot people in the name of what you want in this country no none of that is true christianity true christianity is prayer focused and uh, the fruit of our prayer comes out in our actions we'll be right back you can now leave a message for us which we can air and discuss on this program just call 617-297-7452 that's 617-297-7452 617-297-7452. Feel free to call, leave a comment, a question, or even feedback, and we may play it on the air. I can discuss your comment or question as well, so give that a try. 617-297-7452. 617-297-7452. We're back, and we're talking about uh, this powerful message from Jeremiah. So Jeremiah is is telling the story of the potter the lord shows him that the potter when the pot when his creation doesn't work right he can just just break it down and start all over again and he says this to jeremiah as well this is what he says and he the lord can do the same thing so he also adds if there is a society that turns away from him he can rebuild the society by starting all over again and if there is a society that is good and holy and does what the Lord wants, but then at the last moment turns away from the Lord, then he can still do the same thing. Do you understand that? But he's calling the people to seek to follow the Lord. This is important within the context. You cannot, I remember a priest friend of mine told me this a long time, time ago, you cannot legislate charity. So it means we've got to live like that ourselves. We've got to be people who seek to live a holy life. And in doing so, this is what builds a society. It's not built by the nation enforcing, uh, we'll say, uh, the laws of God. And I'll talk about that in a second because it doesn't work. It's internal. Remember, when Jesus died on the cross and rose again, then at that point, the law was written on our hearts, right? So it becomes an internal motivation. The external motivation is gone because ultimately the external motivation is not going to work. Why? Because the external motivation will only work through tyranny. And this is something a lot of the atheists are worried about. They don't want to see uh, Christianity legislated, but it shouldn't be legislated. It's an internal uh, motivation. And they say, well, we have to get back to God. Well, then get back to God. But you want to be careful of that. You cannot legislate. And this is the difference between the Old Testament and the New Testament. The Old Testament was written in a case of external motivation. The New Testament is written in a case of internal motivation. And so we seek holiness and we seek to live holiness. We don't have to have laws that tell us how to live because the laws are in eternal, internal rather, and eternal. So do you understand that difference? And this is one of the things that comes up when you have the, the Ten Commandments in the classrooms. Now, some people say that's a good idea. Some people will say it's a bad idea. Personally, I, I you know, when you look at the Ten Commandments, they're pretty common sense. If you really think about it, they're, they're just pretty common sense. You know, I, people, I don't want, that's religious stuff. Okay, so you think it makes sense for people to be out stealing and lying and murdering and seeking their neighbor's spouse? And is that what you're saying here? Because I don't see how that makes any sense. Uh, do, do you understand? Do you understand me? 
So, um, but when you're looking at the Ten Commandments, it, there as an external motivation, it, it, it doesn't work. It's an internal mo- motivation. So, one of the sources you can, what even things you can look at, it says, why would I, why would I lie, cheat, steal, murder, whatever? Uh, why would I want to do that? And especially if we're focused on seeking to do the will of God, why would I want to do any of that? So it's an interesting discussion. Should you have the Ten Commandments in, in a classroom or not? I'll leave that up to the legislators. But even if it's there, it's not as, as important as realizing that the law is written on our hearts. So we have to follow the law on our hearts, not the law that is... Um, uh, an external motivation because an external motivation doesn't work just talk to the fine folks in the na- who run the nation of iran father were you being sarcastic when you said that you're darn right i was i was in the navy during the iran hostage crisis you're darn right i was yeah um do, do understand that that uh, the motivation has to be internal and therefore, that internal motivation is what leads us to holiness, not the external. So this is part of the whole thing that Jeremiah is trying to explain, or actually God is trying to explain to Jeremiah so that he writes it out so that all can understand, that we seek the Lord. The Lord can change us if he wants, any way he wants, including the whole society, but what we don't want to see that change we want to instead seek the Lord from an internal motivation. And this is a, a powerful teaching that we're finding in this very, very famous passage from the prophet Jeremiah. We'll be back tomorrow. I want to call your attention to Catholic TV, which offers great faith-filled, family-friendly programming 24 hours a day. You can find your cable channel at www.getcatholictv.com, and you can watch online on the free apps or check out the YouTube channel. Daily Mass, Rosaries, the Divine Mercy Chaplet, and the Our Lady of Perpetual Help Novena are all available online and on demand. Check out catholictv.com. Com. Remember, when you're looking for a place to attend Mass, and if you don't already attend Mass at your local parish, come to St. Anthony Parish in Alston, Massachusetts. We're located at 43 Holton Street in Alston, just a few blocks up from Soldiers Field Road. And you can check us out. Come to our 10 o'clock a.m. Mass and come to experience our Catholic worship at St. Anthony Parish in Alston, Massachusetts.